And from the next sentence, responsible Christian men do their part by setting an example of obedience as they put such arrangements into effect. Are we to understand that the expectation of the governing body is, is that the branches around the world will uh, act in accordance with those procedures and guidelines? Uh, that is the expectation, but may I put the proviso on this? You see, as the paragraph 2 starts off, the second sentence, the governing body obeys this direction. Uh, Mr. Stewart, what you need to understand with regard to our organization is a faith-driven organization. It, this is uh, not an organization of lawyers or those that are uh, overly concerned with legal matters. Hello, everybody. Howdy. It's been a while. Yes, and here we are together. The two apostates Watchtower just loves to hate. Just Watchtower? <laughs> well... It all depends on, you know, what side of the fence you are <laughs> these days. Just a real quick correction. In my last video, I had mentioned um, the Apostle Paul being relegated to the same category as Jezebel and Balaam. I mistakenly, mistakenly said Revelation chapter 4. It's actually Revelation chapter 2. Verse That's 14 you... and 20, to be more yeah. specific. Yeah. Because we had someone, you know, email us and... Basically, I mean, are they thinking we're crazy or something? Not, who knows? Well, one of the things you have to recognize is you can ask any indoctrinated Christian out there, tell me specifically from the Bible what it was that Jezebel and Balaam were teaching that led those ancient Israelites into apostasy. Specifically, what were they teaching? Uh, things sacrificed to idols? Well, you won't find that in the Old Testament because it doesn't identify what they were specifically teaching. You don't recognize that till you get to Revelation chapter 2. Well, the person that had emailed me yesterday and then they said, Oh, well, I've got it all figured out. Then there's a difference. Right. Food sacrificed to idols and then Jesus and the Apostle Paul saying, All foods are clean. So there's a difference there. Well, there again. They, I'm not going to argue about it because I don't care. Well, you just blend the two to become a confusionist. It's just that simple. Yeah, I, I don't care. You know, you know how I feel about the Bible stuff. <laughs> we only use it. To go after Watchtower. So, getting back on point here, I am at the website churchofjesuschrist.org, the Mormons. Now, when I'm looking at this website, it's like, oh, good Lord. <laughs> I swear I'm looking at jw.org. If, you know, some of the pictures and stuff weren't, you know, the if they were the same, it, it would be the same thing. You know, they even have, you know, the frequently asked questions or common questions, you know, about their beliefs and, you know, they're accused of not being Christians and the whole thing. I mean, it's just like JW.org. So right there, the similarities is, yeah, if I didn't know what website I was on, I would think I was on JW.org. So there's a similarity right there. But we're going to get more into this. All right, so I am under their uh, common questions. What is the history of the Mormon Church? Now, for those that don't know, um, the Mormons believe that Joseph Smith was chosen by God or by an angel, however, you know, Moroni or whatever his name was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some angel. Um... And I'm just going to read this. What is the history of the Mormon church? And listen and see if you hear any similarity. Maybe the dates are different, but it's very similar. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was officially founded in Fayette, Fayette, New York in 1830. So, you know, there's several documentaries. There's even one on our channel called The Root Shoots and Those in Cahoots that a lot of these religions were started in the mid-1800s, including the Bible students, a.k.a. Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, the first president of the church was Joseph Smith. He had a vision of Jesus Christ and God the Father and was called as a prophet to restore the church of Jesus Christ. He received the priesthood of God, translated the Book of Mormon, and sent missionaries to preach the gospel across North America and overseas. Now, if you do a little bit of history, they brag that they have over 14 million members. 
but they also have the same problem Watchtower and several others do with systemic um, problems with their hierarchy covering up covering things up you know <laughs> yeah. we all know you know they have we all know what this is they have an abuse problem too I'm not going to mention specifically so they officially were founded in 1830 the church headquarters moved to Ohio Missouri and Illinois to escape persecution and find a place for its members to gather Due to suspicion and local political conflicts, the Prophet Joseph Smith was unlawfully jailed in 1844 and killed by a mob. <laughs> now, many of us recognize, you know, Joseph Rutherford and seven others were jailed in 1918 to 1919. Un unlawfully. That's, that's all you need to know is that this is Watchtower's... Mm -hmm get the same pattern, the same history, unlawfully for being seditionist, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Now, I want to mention that I happen to have a Mormon Bible here. And this is the Bible part of it. Which is a King James Version. Yeah. Yeah. See, King James Version. And then they have an appendix with topical guide... Bible Dictionary and Joseph Smith Translation. And then back here, Joseph Smith Translation. Now, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we are all told, well, yeah, you know, the Mormons have their own Bible, and they hold the Book of Mormon higher than they do the Bible. And I'll even qualify that. One day when we lived in Arizona... I was coming home from work, and here comes two neatly dressed Mormons with the little lapel patch badges. And they approached me as I was stepping out of my truck, and I recognized them right away. And I says, "Look, you're more than welcome to come into my house if you want to discuss the Bible, but your Book of Mormon stays outside." They didn't take that challenge, and the same holds true for Jehovah's Witnesses. You you could make this challenge to J, uh, to JWs by saying, look, you're more than welcome to come in and talk about the Bible, but your watchtower stays outside. They won't do it because Jehovah's Witnesses, as I'm about to state and prove, they value the Watchtower magazine higher than the Bible. That's why for a lot of years on this channel, I could rightfully state Jehovah's Witnesses don't know the Bible, but they do know the Watchtower. And there's reasons for that, and we're going to expose that right here. Well, especially the past, oh, let's say even eight years, you know, that we have been out. <laughs> Watchtower has changed and flip-flopped their stuff so much in the, you know, previous decades that right now most Jehovah's Witnesses don't even know what they currently believe. You know, most know about the overlapping generations and, oh, no blood transfusion. But many don't even know that they changed the blood fractions. You know, it's right. now a conscience matter. And, you know, when, when you really try to talk to your indoctrinated Jehovah Witness and try to show them stuff from their own literature, what their belief system is, they will reject it. Why? Well, I like to call it dumbassery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just this simple for us right, right now. Why others can't resonate and think, of, think it through, I don't know. Now, I want to thank Atlantis, our dear friend. Thank you, sweetie. This is a gem. Now, this comes from this book. This little gem that most Jehovah's Witnesses don't even know about. We didn't even know about this book until we left in 2012. It is the 1959 Jehovah's Witnesses in the Divine Purpose. Oh my goodness, there are so many gems in here. And I am gonna put a link down below to this book because current Jehovah's Witnesses, I mean, what are they gonna say about a 1959 book? Oh, well, that's apostasy. That's apostate, unless Watchtower quotes from this book directly. Right. Now, this book 
which they actually have mm -hmm. several times. Um, this book is written in a conversation type form to where it's Jehovah's Witnesses talking about their history. And oh my goodness, like I said, there are some gems in here. As you can see, you know, we've done videos about some things in mm -hmm. here in the past just by these little post-it notes. See, and this was actually published in 1959. So to put all of this in context to show you Jehovah's Witnesses that you do not know the Bible, you actually view the Watchtower as your Bible. And you have a terrible time when it contradicts itself. You, uh, you absolutely do. That's why you refer to it as old light, old light. Good thing we don't believe like that. If you're waking up, I would recommend right now going to XJW Elder's wife Jane Doe because the past several videos that she's been doing has been reading from the 1950s Watchtower. I know you're going to say it's old light, it's old light, it doesn't apply no more, but wait till you hear what Kim has to read in 1959, how you are supposed to have felt about the Watchtower. And if you haven't seen it, Smurf Girl's latest video, because she does a side-by-side -side comparison, and your organization absolutely contradicts, contradicts itself and actually contradicts the evidence that they used to prove what they were stating in the first place. It, it, it's just that simple. Now I will put a link down below to both of those ladies chan uh, videos that they had recently done because they're very good. Um, brilliant. brilliant. Well, it, It's brilliant is what it actually yeah. is. And speaking of brilliant, Atlantis had sent me this comment and so I want to read from this book in the divine purpose and like I said I'm gonna put the link down below to the PDF scan of this book that I believe he is the one that actually did the scan for this on page uh, 22 chapter 3 the last subheading God's channel shows signs of identity now keep in mind the Australian Royal Commission Jeffrey Jackson was asked, do you see yourselves as, well, that would be presumptuous. And do you see yourselves as Jehovah God's spokespeople on earth? Uh, that, I think, would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. It's not presumptuous right here. This is a stated fact. Okay, God's channel shows signs of identity. So you see, Tom, in many ways the evidence was beginning to accumulate that of all the early voice voices heard, Jehovah had chosen the publication we now call the Watchtower to be used as a channel through which to bring to the world of mankind a revelation of the divine will and through the words revealed in its columns. Now I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> the Book of Mormon. On the front, another testament of Jesus Christ. How is this any different than the Mormons with their Book of Mormon? See, they view this as the channel that God chose to as a revelation to the world. And listen to the words carefully impress these words upon your minds. Jehovah had chosen the publication we now call the Watchtower to be used as a channel. That statement right there <laughs> relegates the Bible to second place. Now why do you, why could you even imagine that the Watchtower Babel Craft Society would even do that. What did they know about the Bible back in the 50s that they would even dare make a statement like that, that Jehovah is using the watchtower to communicate with humankind? What about the Bible, Christians? Do you understand? What is it that watchtower knows that allows them to bold facely print this? Well, like I said, how is this any different than the Mormons with their Book of Mormon? You know, there's no difference. 
Now I'm going to reread that because there's actually more in that sentence. The sentence, right. the sen one sentence is about this long in the paragraph. In its absolutely loaded language. Yeah. Jehovah had chosen the publication we now call the Watchtower to be used as a channel through which to bring to the world of mankind a revelation of the divine will and through the words revealed in its columns to begin a division of the world's <laughs> population into those who would do the divine will and those who would not. The cause of div the watchtower's purpose is to cause a division among mankind, and this division comes from Jehovah Himself through the watchtower. Well, it's just like their latest, you know, annual meeting, the sheep and the goats. So this goes right back to you're oh. either a sheep or a goat. Oh, 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 yeah, it's like Matthew 24 when Jesus arrives in His glory and sits upon His throne to separate. You know, mankind, the sheep's on his right. And the, do you people realize that that scripture is being fulfilled through the Watchtower? Through the Watchtower magazine. This is how arrogant these men are. Now think about, you know, the Mormons and how they say Joseph Smith was chosen in, um, you know, the 1830s. 18, you know, the 1800s as the priesthood of God. He received the priesthood of God. Okay? Now think about this. Now also think that we have always been taught. I know they've changed it a little bit through of the course. years, but down through all of their history or at least since, you know, the 1800s, they have said that in 1918, 1919, Jesus came down and inspected the Bible students and found them to be the only ones doing God's will. Okay? Now remember that. And you can go look it up. I can't remember if well, it's they, 1918, 1919, because like I said, they've been changing it through the years. Well, they've even done videos on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we've covered a lot of this, you know, in previous videos. Okay, now listen carefully to what you know, this book is going to say next, okay, of who would do the divine will and those who would not. For this reason, 1879 was a turning point in the work. Huh? Well, I know that's when they started publishing the very first Watchtower. Oh, that's the turning point. The Watchtower replaces the Bible. Yeah. For this reason, 1879 was a turning point in the work. This little group, headed by C.T. Russell, okay, I thought they claimed that Jesus was the head of this little group <laughs> and of, you know, the Bible students and of their congregation. No. C.T. Russell. This little group, headed by C.T. Russell, had now been tested and had been found fit to undertake the great preliminary campaign leading up to the climax expected in 1914. <laughs> I got a climax for you. It all failed. <laughs> Twice. So this is prior <laughs> to 1918. Okay, and I'm going to read Atlantis' remarks, you know, of what he had to say with this, and I totally agree with him. But what could this small band expect to accomplish throughout the world in less than 40 short years? Even with favorable conditions, the task would have looked formidable. But these undaunted iterant, <laughs> interant, <laughs> in, in, itinerant pe preachers set out literally on foot to accomplish the task in the face of what they knew would be the bitterest opposition. The record of praise to Jehovah's name that they built up in almost 40 years could only have been accomplished as stated in Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith Jehovah of hosts. Only Jehovah could have been feeding and directing his people. <laughs> it's the same thing the Mormons say. That's right. And Unlike the Mormons, at this point in history, Watchtower has failed. Okay? Because they predicted, oh, the end would come in 75. Oh, better yet, this generation will not 
by any means pass away until all these things occur, including the great tri You failed, Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses. Mom, you're in an organization that has failed you. And I would love for every single current Jehovah Witness to be able to hear this, because I'm going to read Atlantis' comment. And um, he has in here the quote from the book. For this reason, 1879 was a turning point in the work. This little group, headed by C.T. Russell, had now been tested and had been found fit to undertake the great preliminary campaign leading up to the climax expected in 1914. And we all know the Bible students back then thought 1914 was going to be the end. <laughs> Surprise! If the Bible students were tested and found fit in 1879, then birthdays? Christmas and other practices had already been approved by God. And that's true, because this right. was all prior. If they were tested and found fit, yeah. that's right, they're ready for battle. And I just can't get over that, you know, they said that they were chosen in 1879 for this great, you know, preliminary campaign or how, yeah, preliminary campaign. So what does 1818 to 1819 have to do with any of this? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I go on. <laughs> Some people ask, if the Bible students were found fit in 1879, then why did they need to be tested again in 1918 or 1919 if they were already practicing what was approved previously? Good question. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, they just, they don't get it. Um, you know, there's, there's truly a whole lot involved with this whole religious theology nonsense. It goes back to ancient Egypt, ancient uh, Samaria, um, and things like that. But unless you do your study, your research, and totally comprehend what is at play here, it's easy to be misled by words such as, this generation will not pass away. It's dead. It's gone. You failed. Well, in watching Smurf Girl's video last night, um, she had a per picture of a church, I believe it was in the... Um, England. England. Yeah. Of what looked like a watchtower. And she was asking, you know, is this the watchtower that Watchtower was using on those older versions of the Watchtower magazine? Well, in this same book, they have pictures of Watchtower seals here. Guess what? That's that same church. <laughs> right on their seal. Oh, you you just didn't connect a dot to paganism to a to a false religious church. A false religious synagogue, did you there, the Apostle Paul? Did you, Paul? Did you just connect all of that to, you know, apostasy? What, you know, what you're teaching? <laughs> Come Would on, I people. do that? No! <laughs> it's, guys, it, it's, <laughs> it's really just this simple. But you have to be willing to spend the time to not only immerse yourself into research, but think about what you are researching. Think about what all these religions have done to us mentally. And right off the bat, it has separated people. Based on the theology that Jesus is going to arrive and sit in his glorious throne. And all the people on his right, the sheep, will go into everlasting life. Going to heaven, playing the harp, you know, sitting on clouds with nothing to do for all eternity. While the goats are going to perish and be tortured for the rest of their spiritual life outside the body. Well, like I said, this book has some incredible gems in here of things they admit. You know, they, like chapter 8, the climactic approach to 1914. Did the divisions that occurred within the organization and the opposition that was raised up against Pastor Russell seriously affect the work, John? No, not seriously. Well, yeah, because they lost over half of their membership <laughs> back then. So, I mean, this book is just full of gems. And 
it's a book that most of us never even knew about as JWs, but you can see why they had to get rid of it. See, one thing too that you have to also recognize, um, particularly in the video that Smurf Girl did and what XJW Elder's wife Jane Doe is doing, they're leaving links to those articles that are still on JW.org. So those articles are still there. Now, if you happen to go and get a link and the article has changed ever so slightly, contact us because we got the hard copies. This will condemn Watchtower once again to show that they are being less than honest with what they wrote all those decades ago. That's why these things are much, much more invaluable or have much more valuable than the crap you read on JW.org because the stuff on JW.org can easily be twisted and changed. Well, that's why they have it now on digital copies. And it's interesting because when you have the Watchtower Library app and the Watchtower Library CD-ROM, I have the CD-ROMs. When I put the CD-ROM in and it opens up, it says, do you want to update? Do you want to connect an update to JW.org for, you know, the latest? And it's like, no. 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 <laughs> so there again, you know, Rutherford said it right, friends. Religion is a snare and a racket. And if you look through history, throughout history with all of these religions, they all have one thing in common and at this point I'm not going to tell you what I think it is because if you study and research even even the old Pharaoh Akhenaten and really look at what he did and why you'll you'll come to the conclusion you'll see it on your own well you finally figured it out I did it's would you like me to explain it briefly? Do the Reader's Digest condensed version. I don't know that I have the ability to do the Reader's Digest <laughs> conversion. But what it's all about, friends, if you really look at the process, okay? Akhenaten was a pharaoh. At the time that Akhenaten was a pharaoh, all of Egypt worshipped multiple gods. Multiple gods. They had altars everywhere. God for this and a god for that. And, you know, they probably even had some god that could even wipe your butt. I don't know. But I'm just throwing that out there to be silly. Here's the thing. What this pharaoh did is he consolidated all those gods all those days now you think about what those people are doing if you have if you have a god called Sant E. Claus you will give your money to Sant E. Claus on the day that that god is idolized now you have another god that's called Saint Valentine's and you will consolidate all your money on that day to that one god now if you've got all these hundreds and hundreds of gods and all of your resources, the resources of Egypt, is sharing all those resources to all these different gods. How do you consolidate all these different gods to get that flow of the resource right to you? Whether that be, I don't know, the choicest of sheep, the choicest of vegetables, all your gold, all your silver, all your vital energy. How do you do that? Monotheistic. Well, monotheism. That's right. And what you do is you become an apostate to everybody else. We all get that. But now, this Pharaoh, Akhenaten, in a stroke of brilliance, said, We're done with all these other gods. We're going to worship the one, the Aten, the sun. And what he did is all those people that followed him, and all their resources were all funneled to Akhenaten. And we even have a modern day um, comparison. Look at in India, you know, a lot are Hindu and Buddhist. They have a ton of gods. And, you know, we like the uh, Praveen Mohan uh, YouTube channel. He, they're in India, and he travels around. It, Nothing to do with religion. He just travels around showing all these different Hindu temples, temples in India and Cambodia, you know, Angkor Wat, 
And I mean, it's just incredible, you know, what they were able to do. But they have all these gods and all these different altars, and they worship all these different gods. Well, they don't have enough resources to <laughs> yeah. contribute. Because, see, you're supposed to leave offerings of food and money and gold and stuff. So they don't have the money, you know, to worship all these gods at once. So with the stroke, common sense. Yeah. So with the stroke of brilliance, Watchtower, in my opinion, guys, followed the same pattern as Akhenaten. Because see, while all of Christendom is celebrating St. Valentine's Day, Christmas, um, Christmas birthdays. birthdays, all these other, you know, pagan holidays, all that money in Christendom is being, all those resources is being divided. So here comes Watchtower, you know, with the Freemason name Jehovah, we're going to we're going to apostatize ourselves from all of Christendom. We're going to start a new religion, call ourselves Jehovah's Witnesses, use the name in the Bible to validate what they're doing. But guess what they do? They get you to stop celebrating birthdays. They get you to stop um, celebrating Christmas, national holidays. They got you to stop worshiping all those gods. And they focused all your attention, all your resources to the watchtower how brilliant and he did this well he plainly stated religion is a snare and a racket but he got all of this all of your resources your vital energy going out knocking on door to doors for free he consolidated everything everything right down to the watchtower yeah. stroke of brilliance and guess what we all bought into that nonsense. And yet some of us can't seem to detach, even though what they all said, this generation will not, thousands upon thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses, my mother included, are giving away your inheritance to what is really a stroke of brilliance consolidating all that wealth to funnel in one direction, whether that be Akhenaten, in worshiping the sun or the Jehovah's Witnesses in worshiping the Watchtower magazine. Yeah. It's not difficult if you just sit back and process the, the it, well, if you just look at the chessboard, you can see what's coming and what the next two or three moves are ahead. If you're that awake and you can criticize and look at it. Well, look at, I mean, even the world will say that, you know, in normal circumstances, an average family will spend at least $1,000 on Christmas every year. Well, guess what? Watchtower gets rid of Christmas, birthdays, all of that. <laughs> That's a lot of money. And all your money gets funneled to Watchtower when they say, help us build more kingdom halls. Help us do this. Help us become an online religion now, brothers. Well, now they're asking for money because they want to do a movie-length documentary about <laughs> Jesus. Well, what? What? What good does that do them when back in 1959, the Watchtower was your God? The Watchtower was your God, just like the Book of Mormon became the God for the Mormons. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We really appreciate all of you because without you, you know, we wouldn't be able to do all this. And thank you, Atlantis, dear friend, you know, for everything you have done. Yes. And what you've done behind the scenes. Thank well, you. What it really comes down to is this community absolutely owes that man a thanks of gratitude. Because without him, this channel wouldn't be doing what we're doing by far and large. Because a lot of the stuff that we see, and we... We give recognition to our sources when we choose to use them. Yeah. And we've recognized this man's work for a lot well, of years. We don't mean to sound mysterious, but he just sent me a external drive that we will call Beastzilla number two. Number two. That has not only Jehovah Witness archives, but everything he can get his hands on, you know, from other religions and magazines. And oh my goodness. I haven't even had a chance to go through it all and he has grabbed stuff from websites and I mean it's just an amazing amount of work so 
just know that we appreciate it so much yes. and we appreciate him sharing it because now we can share you know this stuff this information with the community no. so thank you but I will warn you you know he warned us at the very beginning protect yourselves no matter what and he says do not put elders letters or um, their manuals you know stuff like that that would be very sensitive do not put it on your website and if you have an elders letter you know you can hold it up and right. read it but don't put the screenshots on your video so you know I just wanted to share that with all of you because <laughs> yeah. I know some of you are well, he, basically in trouble with well, Watchtower. They gotta learn the hard way even though they were warned multiple times don't do it. But hey, you know, just like the kid touching the hot stoves, how many times is your kid gonna really get burnt before they realize, damn, that stove is hot. Mom and Dad, you were right. <laughs> hey, hey, come on guys. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, just like I learned earlier, you take the snow shovel and knock down the <laughs> snow and ice yeah. from the roof because when you shut the door behind you, ice falls on your head and you get a big bump. Yeah. I'm still seeing all tweet, tweet. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Thank God I have a hard head. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Tell me about it, dear. So, friends, thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank for you. watching Atlantis. Thank you so much for having that level of trust in Kim and I with this. We we just we just don't know how to say thank you, but then just try to make everybody recognize just what we are involved with, people. And thank you to all of you who have been sending me links and stuff. Um, I am going back to my emails, and I'm trying to answer as many as I can. Uh, Mike actually made a yeah, mistake. I did. Yeah, well. It isn't last November 2020. Uh, my emails go back to November of 2019. And um, yeah. so I am, I think I'm finally back in uh, into 2020 now. I've been able to answer, you know, um, a lot of those. So if you do not get a reply from me, please don't take it personally. <laughs> um, but there's just so much, you know, so many send me links to videos and articles, you know, and unfortunately I can't answer every single one of those. So it's not that I don't value you letting me know, but you know, an article from the summer of 2019 um, really doesn't have. Um, you know the precedence you know right now yeah so well. you know just understand that but I do appreciate it so much and you know everybody's sending me this information well and there again and that's on top of the stuff that we're doing you know with our sources and, and everything and else. things so that's behind on the scenes top of, exactly yeah, yeah exactly yeah because you know, you know we do work on things behind the scenes yeah too. and there's and there's a large large amount of um, non Jehovah Witness YouTubers that are wanting us to do their research for them and it's like you do your own research yeah just I, listen to what I'm saying you, you and here again if you only catch the video that I did just the other day about you know that Jesus and re relegating Paul to the same category as Jezebel and Baal and recognize that I did a full length feature on that whole entire topic that you missed I'm sorry but the information is already there. You gotta go find it now. Yeah, exactly. And that is a you know huge amount of emails I get is people wanting me to do their research about something, you know. And I'm sorry, I just cannot do that anymore, you know, because there's so many people wanting research. You know, if you want like one or two, you know, links to an old book that you cannot find. Fine, I will be happy to share that stuff, but I am not going to go research, you know, a subject that we have covered in videos and, you know, that is easily searchable mm -hmm. online. You know, yeah. I just don't have time to do everybody's research for them. Right. And I'm sorry if that makes me sound belligerent. Like I was accused of. Yeah, oh, 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 yeah. Well, you just have to be in front of the yeah. camera, you know, just showing real pretty flowers or, you know, cats, you know, rolling in a little bit of flower, and you're going to have a troll um, tell you how horrible the video is. So, I mean, that's, that's part of the game. 
Yeah, exactly. And I'm sorry if anybody thinks that I was belligerent to them, but, you know, I just can't do your research. And if it's something I already know about, and we've already done videos about that, you know, and it's not that I was trying to be belligerent, it's just I was just explaining, you know, but see, I took all the time to explain about, you know, the link to this information, and then they call me belligerent. <laughs> after the, after you spent all that time getting the link and doing the research, right, basically? Yeah, after <laughs> explaining to them what, you know, is on these congregation charity you know, the government charity um, registers. Yeah. You know, we've done several videos about that, and I was just nicely explaining what it meant. But see, I went through all this time to explain this to the person, and then they accused me of being belligerent. So guess what? Now, I'm not going to explain those type of things to That's you. Right. I'm not going to do your research for you. So... Anyway, well, like I say, it is what it is. This community is growing because Watchtower is emptying out more than more than their numbers are going to project or show at this time. That's why they are becoming an online religion and their little scheme to make movies about Jesus and all this stuff that you watch somehow some way you're going to see that they are selling these to other religions to show in their own churches it's almost like well it's almost like you know the mother gathering her chicks underneath the one the one wing yeah well <laughs> even in these zoom meetings the jehovah's witnesses are all encouraged because oh look at our numbers are growing you know our zoom meetings are up to 70 80 people instead of 20 or 30. no it's not growth it's not growth at all. They're merging congregations into one Zoom meeting. Right. We just heard about an area where four congregations were merged into one. This is why you've got so many at your Zoom meetings. Because you guys aren't doing any more door-to-door -door work. You know, your, your letter writing campaign is going to prove to be an epic failure. See, and we're hearing from several PIMO elders that they're running out of brothers to be elders <laughs> you know some go to elders meetings and you know they're in their 50s and they're the youngest one there there's no young you know men to become elders unless you see something on jw.org where they're actually manufacturing a lie i mean that's the world we live in today people lies are being manufactured and nobody's Nobody's stepping back and eyeballing the big picture to see how these lies are being manufactured. We see it on a daily level here. Exactly. So, thank you so much for watching and, like I said, subscribing. You know, welcome to all our new subscribers and we thank all of you older subscribers and for watching our videos. Yes. And I will put the links down below that I said I would. And you all have a wonderful week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.